Can you see a big return coming, or do you always place positions looking for a measured, modest return, and then you're pleasantly surprised by the one in 10 or the one in five big successes that happen? I mean, if, if you were to look at my portfolio, there, there are things in there that are singles and doubles. There are things yeah. in there that are potential home runs. You know, for example, um, you know, the one stock in my portfolio, which I'd say has hasn't worked yet, but has the b potential f for a big home run is General Motors. Okay, in what way? They're long or so, short? So, it's on the long side. You're long? I'm long Mary General Barbara. Motors. So, I mean, look, the stock's down because of the, the trade war issues, so that's well known. But, you know, General Motors is, General Motors and Google are the leaders in autonomous driving. And if autonomous driving takes off, it's quite possible that the autonomous driving division of General Motors, which currently right. loses about 50 cents a share, will be worth more than the whole company. Tell me about profitability. Bring this up, if you would, right now. We were just looking at Amazon and four cents on the dollar. GM, obviously, completely not comparable to Amazon. But I got EBITDA margin of, you know, nice teens margin. And I just can't get it down to the net income line. I mean, it's okay, seven cents on the dollar, but with huge capital commitment still by an auto manufacturer. But that's true, but you know, let's have a little, hist let's have a little history here. Please. Um, <clears throat> General Motors is actually a fairly well-run company. That is a shocking statement to those of us who have followed it for a very long time because pre-crisis, it was a horribly run company. So it's much better run, it's much more efficient, it throws off cash. Um, it's a better company, and it has, it has a, ch a shot at really doing something quite fantastic in autonomous driving. Any other bets in autonomous driving, Steve Eisman, other than General Motors? Um, Aptiv and uh, obviously Google. Those are our three. All right. And also, you were saying earlier that, look, it's better than talking about value, momentum, whatever, to look at the economy. Now... We had uh, Charles Dumas of TS Lombard on the show uh, earlier this week or last week, and he was saying, I think I saw him last one of the week. things that fantastic. Well, one of the things that he was talking about, you might remember then, is that what actually led to the subprime crisis was this savings imbalance in the world, and that is still present. Is that something that causes you concern right now? I mean, he's probably referring to what's what's commonly called as the debt super cycle, which has fueled mm -hmm. the global economy now for a very long time. Um, there's a, a very macro call to be made that eventually the debt super cycle will end. Um, it's such a huge macro call um, that who knows when it's going to happen. I want to go back to General Motors, and there's a huge focus on Mr. Musk and space flight and such. And then you've got the oddity of an auto manufacturing operation in a tent in California. What is the Tesla value and stock value through the Iceman prism. I don't see the value in Tesla. We're, we're short Tesla. Um, there, you know, look, Elon Musk is a very, very smart man, but there are right. a lot of smart people in this world, and being smart is not enough. You've got to execute. And he's got execution problems. I mean, we'll see how his quarter, mm -hmm. how his quarter goes, but, you know, his, his negative cash flow, as you said, he's building cars in a tent, and um, right. he's nowhere in autonomous driving, as far as I can tell. And, and big competition is coming in his space next year. Describe for us how you take the cash flow analysis from revenue. You've got partial differentials of unit dynamics, huge mystery about how he'll deliver units, but also price. And you've got to bring that down to cash flow. And with Tesla, not one, but both of those are somewhat of a mystery, aren't they? There's a lot of mysteries to Tesla. I mean, I mean, the thing that I think is interesting about Tesla from the negative perspective is just that the, the company has lost an enormous number of uh, executives over the last two years. And, I mean, we'll see. Maybe he pulls a rabbit out of the hat and gets the company going better. But so far, uh, the jury's out. Have you, the way he's gone Steve. after the media, the way he's gone after analysts, has he spoken to you? And has he gone after Steve Eisman? Well, maybe after today. <laughs> maybe after today. 